morning to all of you and thank you Praminsa, for such a, a wonderful and nice uh, introduction and just give me a moment let me share my ppt Okay, so I I hope my uh, PPT is visible to all of you. Uh, is it so? Yeah. Okay. So uh, welcome to all of you. So so we are going to start the first session of this wonderful workshop, which is uh, which will be dealing with the data science, which which is a uh, you know uh, very uh, upcoming thing. You 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 are listening a lot of uh, words with data science, data scientists, and these things. So this is. Uh, just a, a field which is booming right now. So that's why we are organized, we have organized this workshop that is data science with and machine learning. And uh, this could be done either by R or the Python. So we, in the past, we have uh, given a workshop about the data science with R, but you could do this with the Python also. So now we are going to deal with the Python. And beside this, there will be few sessions of the genome wide association studies. So today's lecture is more about uh, introductory type. So we'll talk about what, what is decode live, what, what is the preface of this workshop. And uh, uh, I'll try to introduce you about the Linux environment, which is a basic thing if you are going to work into the field of data science or in, in the field of bioinformatics. So Linux is a basic thing. So I'll deal about, uh, I'll talk about the introduction, how the Linux environment worked, and then we'll move to the next next phase where, where I'll try to, demonstrate you some of the basic as well as advanced uh, Linux commands. So uh, this is my contact number uh, throughout the workshop. If you are having some issues regarding anything you didn't understand for any session or any query, you could always mail me or you could try to reach me with a WhatsApp. So this is open to everyone and it's, it's, it's always, uh, you're welcome to have with some genuine query only. Okay, so as you know that this is the uh, uh, Decode Life who is organizing this workshop. So it's it's a uh, affordable band format enterprises, and it has been started with some of the you know researchers who whose aim is to provide adequate training, and we wish to provide a platform where where uh, upcoming band formations will try to uh, network with each other and will grow with each other. And as we know that there is a knowledge gap in the Indian society as well as other, so in the, there's a knowledge gap between masters and the research and the research and the current research which is going into the field. So we just try to make a network where, where we, we, we aim to fill this knowledge gap as well as provide uh, training, timely training. Okay. So this is, is uh, just a brief history about this enterprise. It has been founded in June, 2020 and it is it is registered with the uh, MSME that is many uh, scale and micro enterprises that is affiliated with the government of India. And the Institute aim is to provide the bioinformatic training from basic to advanced level. Till now we have organized more, uh, more than 17 workshops. This is, this is, this one is the 18th. And timely we, we, there have been some workshop which is paid and there have been some free uh, services to the community where we provide the free training. So till now more than 4,000 participated into the paid workshops and more than 7,000 have received the free training. We have uh, more than 15 subject experts who used to come and deliver at our platform with, uh, with within the different workshops. So we, we are, uh, we are a global, uh, you know, enterprise. We we have outreach of around sixty plus country from all over the world. In the in in each workshop, we have analyzed that participants are coming from the different corner of the world, and we we are very much affordable. We provide the content which 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 we suppose is the best content is less than around one dollar per hour. And uh, we are firm believer of the open contribution. So whatever the content will be showed here, whatever slides uh, we are going to present you, whatever the quotes and anything, every, everything will be distributed to the participants. So, so 
till now we have distributed our slides and videos to more than you know participated uh, all the participants in the free as as well as paid workshops so it has been, it, the numbers is more than 10000 which is a very uh, enthusiastic number okay so uh, beside this we have a greater social media outreach like this is the domain this is our domain and in each month we are getting 10 to 20000 hit per month we are not much active on the twitter but still we have 100 followers we are more active on the linkedin and uh, a whatsapp group where you could communicate with each other so we have uh, you know network connection within the within the range of thousands okay so uh, with the, uh, with the two to three months ago we have already uh, started this services where uh, where you could contact us for for if you have any trouble or if you have any issues with some uh, specific fields like if you are working in the field of drug discovery and development and you want to design peptide for stabilization of biologics or or you would you would like to do the high throughput screening against neuronal disease or drug targets or you want to uh, develop the methods to inhibit protein aggregation so if you are working in these fields and you are having some issues and you want some uh, services of uh, outsourcing services so you could contact us uh, and some it analytics is also provided uh, uh, with, with with this institute as well as uh, metagenomic metatranscriptomic and ngs data analysis are also provided so if you are going to work in this uh, taxonomic or phylogenetic analysis or whole genome exome sequencing or rna second analysis variant calling and if you want some outsourcing services you could contact to decode life so similarly in the field of epigenomics also we are giving the outsource services and we have a very wonderful infrastructure facility we have virtual cloud lab for high throughput data analysis we, we, we are dealing with the data management as well as our subject experts are uh, you know expert in in the programming languages like python r Perl, and other things so now coming to this uh, workshop so you must have came across with this uh, flyer over over different social media platforms so this will be one month bioinformatic workshop on data science and machine learning with python which is the first phase of the workshop and then there is a second phase where you will you will be uh, uh, interacting with one of our our instructor who will deal with the genome wide association study so the basic uh, topic uh, as, as i have earlier said that uh, uh, it's a very diverse kind of workshop so you will learn from the basic to advanced so the core skills which is necessary for the uh, bioinformatics is into uh, is linux so so linux will also uh, will be in, initiated into the first two sessions and then we'll move moving to the python programming from scratch to the advanced level and then uh, there will be sessions on the machine learning what is machine learning how you are going to uh, do the data partition feature selection and how you develop the ma machine learning models and evaluate that and then there will be genome wide association so so uh, everything will be uh, all the sessions will be from the starting so if you are very new if you don't know anything you don't have to worry about we'll try to start with the zero and then we'll uh, build up the workshop and we'll build up the sessions so this is the schedule you must have came across with if you have any if there will be any change or any 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 uh, you know modification in the schedule you will be notified but uh, this schedule is also uh, present on the decode live website as well as you must have gone through your uh, whatsapp or as well as email so now uh, what what we are going to deliver in this uh, workshop so we assured you we promise you to deliver some knowledgeable sessions which are will which will be very compact interactive interesting and will try to cover from the basic to advanced man format text and as i said that we believe in the global approach so uh, all the instructors are from different corner of the world and participants are also from all the subcontinents and then uh, we believe in the networking so the participants are also encouraged to uh, collaborate with the projects there have been in the past some successful uh, networking has been framed with this with this platform there have been projects which have been you know uh, completed with with <clears throat> with a greater collaboration so it's a wonderful opportunity for you also if you want to collaborate with someone so make your network strong and do collaborations and what uh, i am going or you could say other participants other instructors are expecting uh, with you is that 
uh, a form of discipline with all the participants. Please don't uh, ask uh, unnecessary questions. There, there is a possibility that some, some are the very beginner participants and some are very advanced. So there may be some sessions or the part of the some session where the advanced learner is feeling it boring, but he or she has to be disciplined. Don't uh, make any nuisance or any, um, you know, um, false comment in the chat, chat box or other things. So respect each, each, each other. And you must be eager to learn the things. And uh, you should be curious to know the things. If you are curious enough, you will lot of, uh, a lot of, we welcome a lot of questions. Just, just be curious and eager to learn and this workshop will be fruitful to you. So as I said that, uh, who will get the benefit, most of the benefit for, from this training if you have your own research project. So this will be a good platform. This will be a good platform to learn the uh, Python other things. So it will add the dimensions to your research if you are going to deal with the genome-wide association study, if you want to include that part into your project, so it will add your dimensions. And if, if you are coming from the pure biological background, don't, you don't have to worry, you will expand your computational knowledge, you will enter into the field of data science with, with, uh, with a good amount of knowledge and it will answer your basic questions. As I said many times, uh, it, it is this training will definitely help you to the build uh, meaningful connections and you don't have to worry each and everything whatever we are going to share with you is coming from very authentic source all of our instructors are from from some reputed institute and they are at least phd and doing postdoc for two to three years so they have a greater experience into their field so whatever they are going to uh, demonstrate or whatever they are going to uh, you know, explain is coming from authentic in, uh, information. And be curious and ask a lot of questions, but these questions must be genuine. And before moving to the next part, which is the introduction to the Linux environment. So I'll just go with, uh, with the chat box. If there is any, you know, uh, good questions, I'll try to answer that. So this is how I am going to work for each session or each part, I'll, I'll tell you, and then we'll move to the chat box if there will be any good questions or any uh, authorized questions i will I, I will try to answer that uh, so many of us are facing sound issue i'm sorry for that do you really sequence analysis and also teach us yeah we do the analysis not the sequencing we do but we do the analysis and also teach you definitely Mm, it's perfect. Sound is good. Voice, please check your internet. Okay, I'm joining with mobile. No, what should I do? Not check internet. So, so sorry to interrupt, uh, Doctor Salman. Your voice is perfect. Okay. Your voice is perfect. Uh, issues are local internet issues. Oh. So, just can we make that. research article after doing the work on Zaman? Yeah, definitely. You could do the. You could make research article after doing this course. And if you want to make the collaboration with us, or if you are having some issues. So you could, could contact us. That's what I have said that this workshop is not just for the for, for the teaching. It is also meant to be framing a networking. So if you have some idea, if you want to do some research articles, if you want to do your own research and you are you, you need some mentors or other things, you could contact us. We will definitely try, try to provide you the mentorship and we'll see how those research projects will uh, uh, go on. There is absolutely no sound. Okay. Do I will refer code for analysis and I will to pay to learn how do I? Uh, uh, this is you have to just write down to the decode life and we'll see what whatever your analysis you would like to do. So then you all or you will get the quotation and other things. Okay, sound is perfect. So a, bit, a lot of guys have said the sound is perfect. So those who are not listening to me is might be the issue from their side. Okay, now coming to the uh, next next phase, which is introduction to the Linux environment. So how I'm going to proceed, I will first talk about the operating system, what is the operating system, and then there is nesting virtual machine, then Linux text editor, and then I will show you how to install the uh, uh, Linux into your operating system, into your uh, personal system. And then we'll move to the uh, some basic commands of the Linux, some scripts, one line session. And this 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 second phase, third phase will be actually more kind of a demo and hands on session. And this may be the uh, tomorrow session. So so before starting, 
I would like to request all the participants, please do not flood the chat box with unnecessary messages. We will, we will share important command scripts in this chat box. We will also share it by other way, but this chat box is an important space where we can share important links, commands, and scripts. So please do not flood it with unnecessary chat. Thanks. Okay. So what is operating system? So uh, if I talk uh, or if I say the bookish language, bookish definition of the operating system, so it's a software which communicate between the user and hardware and allows the program to be run. So that means it, it is it is a middleman, you could say, that uh, uh, that works between you and your, your hardware, your personal systems hardware. So this is the middleman between that and it communicate from uh, it communicate with you to the hardware and this is the operating this is the main thing which allows the program to be run okay so in other word if i say that if if your pc or if your laptop doesn't have any operating system it's it's a kind of a black box it's a useless thing you you can't do anything so what uh, so so do anything your your hardware your uh, laptop your personal system must have a uh, 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 an official or or uh, working a very good operating system it should have then only it will be called a, a, a computer so so that's a very layman language layman definition i have uh, said that okay so a good operating system uh, must have some features like it it, it it should have a task scheduling it, it must have a memory management and it must handle the network communication and the most important thing that your data and users information must be secure so this is the basic features of an uh, of a perfect operating system so uh, if we divide the operating system or if i say what are the type of the operating system it could be divided into the three one is uh, windows which is a microsoft property you know about everyone know about the microsoft so in the world around 83% uh, users use the microsoft then comes the mac os which is apple property that is around 13% uses the apple property and then comes the linux which is an which is a purely open source freely available but unfortunately only 2% guys uses it okay so i i i i still don't know why uh, very only 2% guys uses the uh, linux although this my laptop also has the windows but it comes with the windows by default so but linux is a very good thing and very best thing i i suppose and it's a it's a it's a open source you don't have to pay anything if you buy your laptop and you have the pre installed microsoft it's still you have to pay they 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 charge the uh, 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 for the windows operating system and same, same for the mac os they charge it already but the linux is totally free Okay, uh, let's suppose that if you have some operating system in your in your laptop or in your PC, it doesn't mean that you just have, you could only have the one operating system. So you may have more than one operating system, even two or three operating system into, into a one computer. So it could be done by the virtual machine. And uh, from the last decade, you know, uh, Linux is not a new thing, but uh, a lot has been said from some wonderful platforms in the world about the Linux. Uh, there have been a lot of, big names in the field of computer science who have talked about the uh, freely uh, uh, freeware or the open source so linux is an example of an open source the perfect example of open source so so a lot has been talked about that so window was forced to forced to give you the options of having a linux onto their windows so if you have uh, updated windows that means um, when i say updated windows that means 10 or the pro or 11, 10, 11, if you have Windows, then you could have, uh, uh, you know, uh, Ubuntu or the Linux within the Windows also. So this functions came from, I think, 2016 or 17, they have launched that. So that means you may have more than one operating system. And next thing is, what, what is virtual machine? So virtual machine is, is also software implementation. Uh, 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 it is actually a machine, but uh, software implementation of machine which execute programs like a physical machine. That means uh, if I say that, uh, uh, let's suppose that your PC or your laptop is a physical host machine, which which you are actually seeing by your naked eyes, uh, that's that's your physical host machine. So on the same way, you will install some um, uh, virtual guest machine, which 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 you can't see by your uh, eyes. But that's that's almost the same thing by uh, like your physical machine and uh, 
it it will allow you to execute programs it will allow you to um, uh, you know uh, install some other operating system into that so so this is a, a kind of a guest machine which which run on a physical host machine so so those who have uh, unmuted them there are there is a lot of noise so please uh, mute themselves francisca okay yeah please mute yourself so that means virtual machine is a guest machine which runs on a physical host machine so um if i say uh, in, in another example i should say that uh, uh, your your laptop is a physical machine you see it but uh, uh, if you install some virtual machine like vm vr and other things these are the virtual machine so so they they too have the same features with the with your host machine and uh, it's a it's a virtual thing that as the term says that and it will allow the allow the uh, execution of the program same as your physical machine does um, if you have visited any supercomputing facility or other, any other thing you will see that each sub, each, each supercomputing facilities have a lot of virtual machines installed onto that and uh, uh, on, on those virtual machines you will get a lot of uh, operating system like linux most of them have the linux based operating system multiple uh, operating systems are there multiple virtual machines are there and they have been backed with with some other virtual machines so the, the the data has been backed up in different kind of virtual machines so you are working on to once maybe i am working on second virtual machine on a same super competing facility and there is a backup also so that means on a same physical host machine there are uh, numerous virtual host machine the numbers are maybe 2 3 4 5 or anything like that so so that virtual machine shares the same physical hardware resources with other uh, users so that means whatever the uh, i let's suppose i am working on some virtual machine installed on a super computing facility and uh, any other guy is also working on some different virtual machine installed onto that so but we both share the share the physical hardware resources but our our you know operating systems and our applications are totally different to each other the data is purely secure the users information is purely secure but we are sharing the same physical hardware resources so this is the benefit of having virtual machine Uh, and it's a part of cloud computing you must be hearing a lot of uh, buzz around the uh, cloud computing and other things so, so this is a photo or uh, you could the pick how to demonstrate the non virtual or virtual machine so this is non virtual machine this exact example of your personal system you have a hardware then there is a kernel which which uh, process through the hardware and here you you uh, do all your utilities all your application so all your application process through the kernel and the hardware and then we are coming to the virtual machine this is a one hardware only and then we have installed some virtual machine manager and then there could be one or two or three or more virtual machines like vm1 vm2 and vm3 each has its own kernel and uh, all the utilities all the applications runs through this kernel to this hardware so here you could see that on a same hardware there have been three virtual machines three different kernels so so on each kernel on the each virtual machine there may be two to three user logins so here you could show that the utility or the users and other things are expanding in a exponential manner you could say so this is the example of a how virtual machine uh, actually work out so next thing it was what is linux so it's it's a it's a family of open source that unix like operating system based on the linux kernel so once you will install the linux so its its kernel is known as linux kernel it will be all, also installed with that so linux is actually refers to the unix like graphical user interface that's that's the definition of this based computer operating system so it was developed by linus torvald and released on september 17 1991 so uh, linus torvald wanted to name it as a freex that is pre plus pre plus x that is a user to unix but his project partner al torvald didn't think it's a good name so they finally agreed to linux i just have uh, mentioned this point because uh, i correctly remember when i was uh, doing masters and have uh, uh, you know opted for these uh, exams like gate and jrf at that time so this questions actually comes so that's why i just have uh, in, included this point <laughs> so what is linux so linux is a typically packaged in a linux distribution that includes the linux kernel and and supporting system software and libraries so whenever you will install the linux package all the distribution all the kernel and the supporting libraries by default some by default uh, utilities will be installed with that 
So there have been a lot of Linux distributions like Debian, Fedora, Ubuntu, and these are the these are the freely available Linux distribution. But as there have been a lot of buzz around this Linux, so so there have been some companies or someone you know commercial guys are also come into the picture. So there are there are some commercial distribution like Red Hat Enterprises and SUSC Linux Enterprises server is also available in the market. So we don't have to review about the commercial things. So Debian, Fedora, or Ubuntu is is enough for us, enough for doing our own research and other things. So this is the Linux ar architecture. As I said, that the hardware is the you know, whatever the peripheral devices you see by your naked eyes. That is RAM, CPU, etc. Motherboard, other things. So this is the hardware. So then there is a kernel, which which is a core component of the operating system. Each operating system has its own kernel, like Linux has its own Linux kernel. And there will be shell which take command from the users and execute kernel function. And then there could be a utilities where where uh, one user or multi user could uh, could log in onto those systems, and they they execute their applications like they are doing BI or watching movie or using internet or whatever the things they are doing. So these are the utilities which execute uh, by the shell kernel and then to the hardware. So this is the example of a Linux architecture. Now the next question is, I'm talking about the Linux. So you must be thinking why I'm using the Linux. I have Windows and other things. So Linux is totally free. It's, it's open source. I've said multiple times it's open source, it's a free. And uh, the very astonishing fact about the Linux is that it, ha it doesn't require any extra layer of antivirus protection. So it doesn't require that. So all the virus and antivirus things that goes with the Windows and Mac, Mac with Mac. So in the Linux, you don't need any antivirus protection. So it has been supported by a big user community. So all those good guys in, in the CS field, they, they support that and it's an open source. So, so you will get a lot of libraries as well as codes which are freely available to their platform. And it allows multiple users to work on the same machine and it is extendable to build secure web servers. And the next thing is, uh, next question is where you'll practice the Linux command. So if you are a Mac operating system user, so it has, Mac is actually, it's not the correct definition, but just to make you understand that Mac is something between the Windows and the Linux. So it has whatever the benefits, but whatever the pros, whatever the advantages of uh, Windows operating system kind of, it has its own. And then it has also taken some of the, uh, you know, good thing of, of Linux as well as some advanced thing of its own. So if you are using the Mac, you will you will feel the uh, a little bit of experience with the Windows. Some things are very similar to the Windows. Some applications are very similar to the Linux and definitely Mac comes with their own advantage. So it has something of its own also. So it's a, that's why Mac is very advanced and a good thing to, a, a very good experience to work on. And then if you are having Windows, but a older version, I, I hope very, very few must be using Windows 10 or Windows XP nowadays. But if you have Windows 7 or Windows XP, you don't have to worry. There is another option that you will install some virtual box or the virtual machine into your system. Within that virtual machine, you could install any other operating system. It could be if you have, I, I should not say on this platform, if, if you have any pirated thing, other thing, version of Windows, or you could install that also, as well as Linux also, whatever the things you could, you could install into the virtual machine. And there you will open uh, the terminal app and put practice the uh, Linux commands. Then the third one is that if you have Windows 10 or Windows 11 version, so so uh, I'll 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 tell you as I said that there have been a lot of bugs around the Linux, so Windows was forced to give this option. So now you could update your Windows, and there is option to install Ubuntu onto your Windows 10 or 11 and then open the Ubuntu app and work on the Linux command. So, so, so you could, you could do, you could take, you, uh, you know, you will feel the experience of uh, Linux on your window only. Then there's a text okay. editor thing. So, uh, so text editor is a type of computer program that edits the plain text. So uh, you must be aware of the notepad. Notepad is the property of Microsoft. So say, same thing, text editor. Uh, so, 
is with the Linux. So it, it is equivalent to Notepad only. So text editor provided the operating system. So each operating system has its own text editor. I said that. So Microsoft is has having the Notepad and similarly Linux has a, a V editor. That's a basic editor. So it's 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 a uh, it's a utility or it's application where where you could uh, you know uh, write the things. You could change the file co configuration. You could uh, do the documentation of your file or you could uh, do the programming source code. So uh, as I said that it's it's open source. So so you you will get a lot of text editor with the with the Linux. So the basic one is VIM. That's a basic editor which comes by default. But there have been a lot of advanced text text editor and it is freely available. So, so you will feel the mobile X from G edit and it's a lot of text editors are available. So it's up to you in which you get comfortable. But VI editor that which is, which is the basic one is enough to go with. It has all the utility. Okay. So that's all about the presentation. And uh, as I said, first I'll go with the chat box. If there is any, any authentic questions, I'll try to answer that. And then we'll move to the next part where I'll demonstrate you how you will have the system other things. Okay, so from till uh, from right now, it will be more kind of an interacting session. Uh, I feel that the, the half uh, 30, 35 minutes must be a boring because it only I was speaking other things. So right uh, now we'll go with the more, with much more interaction and hands on kind of things. Okay, so let me go with the question. It's still no audio, the relevant query is not high. Hello, welcome. So I want to know why we use Linux rather than other, why we use Linux rather than other OS. So Khalida, yeah, I said that uh, uh, Linux is an open source. So if you are going to work into the field of bioinformatics or any other things, you will see that most of the, you know, open sourcing thing are uh, developed into the Linux package. So you will get most of the tools into the Linux package because it has benefits of you know, antivirus protection and other thing. So that maybe I don't know if it is a true answer, but that's what I feel. So it has it, it doesn't require any extra layer of protection and other things. And it's easy, easy to, you know, uh, let's suppose that I'm a I am open source guy. I, I have very limited resources. But I have a good knowledge, or you may have a good knowledge. You are developing, you you develop your tool, you develop some software, and you want to give it to you. So, uh, so going with the some of the commercial way may be may not be a good task for you. You may be having some limitations of funding, other things. But if you are good in the Linux, so it is very free. It's it's open. There have been platform where you could launch your utility, and it could be used by uh, other guys. So, so this benefit, what what this platform is providing. Is, this is a very unique thing, so that's why I think Linux has been preferred. That's my that's my answer. I may not be right, but that's what I feel. Because you can't uh, 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 interrupt the Windows operating system. It's it's a property of something they have patented it, but Linux is not patented. Other things, so, so you could go with it. Yeah, slides and recording will be provided to you. Other important resources can be shared to WhatsApp group and owned by admin only. Uh, yeah, it has been owned by admin only because there have been a lot of floods with unnecessary WhatsApp group, WhatsApp messages. There have been some guys who are notorious things. So that's why WhatsApp groups are right now shared with the admin only. But I guess that you could uh, message to the admin and then if there is some authentic resources uh, and documents that could be shared onto the WhatsApp group. I'll talk to the admin how, how to go with it. What's, what's the reason behind uh, giving and not giving the permission to share the thing within the WhatsApp group. How do I know if my laptop has more than two OS? If you have bought the new one, it, it only comes with the one OS. So, so uh, no laptop company has the, you, you know, uh, collaboration with the Linux. So most of the time they, they give it the, they come with the property, which is a commercial thing with, with either with the Mac, if you're going with the Apple or some companies with the Microsoft. So, so they, they, are, they say that it's a pre-installed and they charge you with the operating system. But I know there have been laptops where you, you have to just buy the hardware only the hardware and then you have to install the Linux. That will be very cheap. 
one virtual machine will support one type of OS. No, on a single virtual machine, you could install more than one operating system. On a single virtual machine, you could install Ubuntu, you could install uh, any pre-existing Windows, uh, you could install onto that. So it's it's not like that one virtual machine will support only one type of operating system. No? You could install two or three operating system, a different operating system also. Is there any specific requirement to install Linux? No, I'll talk, I'll tell you how to go with this. Virtual box from Oracle, yeah, Sandeep, that's, that's a very good one. Oracle, VM, where other things. Sir, a VM is integrated inside an OS in order to allow multiple users, right? No, VM is just a text editor. It's, it's a simply text editor. Yeah, it is inside the operating system. It's a, it's a like like you have the notepad in the, into the Microsoft. Which you want to version should you use? Obviously, go with the advanced version. Sir, it is necessary to have a Windows 10 or your laptop. I have Windows 7, the virtual box, you want to work just fine. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Khadija, that's fine if you have uh, Windows 7. So, so uh, you have to install a virtual box into that and then Ubuntu will work uh, uh, fine into that. I have installed Linux in virtual box yesterday, but it is very slow. And uh, no, Sandeep, I do have worked with the uh, earlier in the 2015 16 way into this virtual box and uh, Linux. It was working very fine with me. So, you should see what's the what was the issue with you. It's it's it works a lot of uh, a lot fine. I, I I remember I have done some research project onto that uh, uh, Linux installed with the virtual machine. It was very fine with me. Okay, VM. I mean virtual machine. Yeah, virtual machine. That's that's, that's then your question is same. Uh, but in in a virtual machine, you may have uh, uh, two different operating systems. Okay. If there is any other query, uh, you may unmute yourself and ask just two, for two to three minutes. If there is anything uh, related to the text, whatever I have shared, not the advanced questions, which is going to come into the next part. If anything you didn't as understand, you, you, can, you may ask. I believe uh, I have also on. Will you tell us how to install Linux? Yeah, we, we are going to, I'm going to demonstrate you. Don't worry, Harshita. I'm going to de demonstrate you. Which processor is good for a smooth operation? Obviously, advanced things are much better with the previous one. Can I use all the commands? Uh, uh, can I use all the commands and implementation in Windows 11 instead of Linux? So uh, uh, obviously uh, uh, the purpose is that if, if you are not interested in the Linux, that's fine. Because uh, first two sessions will be on the Linux, then there will be the Python. The Python you could use on the whatever the command prompt of Windows 11, it has given the option. So you, if you are a very good user, you advanced user, you could do on the Windows 11. Beside this, there have been a lot of, you know, uh, what, we, uh, what we call, IE or IP, what I don't exactly remember the term, but there have been applications which which will give you like in the Python, there have been uh, PyCharm and other things like for the R, they have R Studio and other things. So so that doesn't mean you have to go with the command line of Linux or the command line of Windows. So those applications are the very uh, easy interface, very easy to go with it. So if you are not interested in the Linux, it's fine. Uh, there have been options where you could go with it. Similarly with the Anaconda, R Studio, uh, PyCharm, and uh, a lot of things are there. If I am using both OS in one PC, how can I copy text from Windows to Linux terminal? Okay, I'll 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 tell you. I, I we, we we'll see how we have to go with this. These are the next things. Okay, uh, that means uh, so you, could you please virtual machine? Sir, I am using iPad 6. Is it okay? I don't know about the iPad, how to go with, uh, whether they, it has a terminal, other things or not. Just search if, if, if it has terminal. I'm sorry, I didn't have any idea about the iPad 6. Okay, now we are going to uh, the next is uh, Those who have, uh, let me just stop. So those who have the Apple, uh, just raise your hands into the, just raise your hand. I, I just want to see how many are using Apple.
three to four guys have, have the apple. Still raising there are many. Yeah, very advanced users with a huge, <laughs> having, having a good money. <laughs> okay, so uh, those who have the Apple, as I said in the, in the session, uh, Apple has both the uh, good thing, both the uh, advantages of, uh, Microsoft, of Microsoft, as well as uh, Windows, as well as Linux. So if you have Apple, so the next 30 minute will be very boring with you because you have everything with you. So just search uh, in your search icon, just search with that terminal. So once you will search with that terminal, because I can't demonstrate with you, I don't have the Apple right now, so I can't demonstrate. Just search with that terminal, just type terminal in your search uh, box and you will find a terminal app and just open the terminal app. So that is uh, the utility, or you could say that's application based on the Linux, where you will do all the command, command line things. It's, it's, you could say around 50% of the Linux is there only. So just open the terminal. You have where you will practice the Linux command, where you will, you could install with any software, with the with the command line, with Linux based applications you could install from the terminal. Everything you could do with this. What we Ubuntu users will do. So so same goes with the Ubuntu users. Ubuntu has because this is the whole workshop of the Linux environment and the Ubuntu. So if you are a Ubuntu user, you already have that. So same thing for the Ubuntu. You have that terminal. Just open that terminal and you could do the things. So because today's session is about uh, the preface of the workshop, about the giving an idea about the Linux environment, because because I know most of the guys in the Indian community from from university level and other things. I too came from the same background. So we didn't have any idea about about what is Ubuntu, what is this terminal, how this Linux works. We didn't have any about, uh, about idea in the graduation and the masters and even the research. We came across with these things later on. So that's why this is very basic, but I, as I said in the, in the very beginning, this, this session may be boring to some guys who have the other things. It may not be interesting for all the participants. So the, those who want to guys, if you are advanced Linux user, uh, Linux user, so it will it will be boring to you. But if you have the Linux operating system and if you don't know about the command and other thing, so maybe tomorrow's session will be interesting uh, to you. So uh, I hope all those uh, Apple guy have got the terminal app into they have opened that. So in within the terminal, you will you will practice all the Linux commands, how you, you you how you move within your system by the by the commands, and how you installed anything with with the Linux command, how you copy the things, how you uh, Linux, uh, how you run any uh, application or software which is which which is used into the uh, genome wide association studies or doing RNA seq analysis or other things, whatever the pipelines are. So you could do all those things onto those terminal only. Okay. And then if you are having uh, uh, if you are having Windows Seven, so just uh, raise your hands, the Apple guys, and uh, please raise the hands if, if someone has Windows Seven or is Windows XP. I mean, a prior version of Windows Ten. If someone has Windows 7, Windows XP, only those guys, please raise your hand. And this Apple guys, please unraise their hand. Because I'm seeing some hands which has been on with the two, four sides. Okay, four, Reba, one more. Okay, so for the Windows 7 guys, uh, as I said that uh, from 2016 or 17 only, Window has given the option to uh, option to have Ubuntu within the same system. So before that, you have to install a virtual machine with, within your system. So just give me a minute. I will tell you how to go with this. So this is for these only two to three guys who have Windows 7. If you have Windows 10, I'll not suggest you to go with that, but uh, take a look, have a look how, how to go with. So in future, if you want to play with your machine, if you want to have 
just get the experience of that you could do it but if if you have windows 7 or 11 uh, i'll not suggest you to do the things with do some unnecessary burden on on your system just give me a minute i'll share my screen In the meantime, we would like to announce that we will share the video recording of this session today itself within two hours, along with the PowerPoint presentation and commands for tomorrow's practice. So please visit Drive link. There you will find schedule and video records, recordings along with the relevant material. Thanks. Okay, so this is the link that is virtualbox.org. Uh, so, you just have to visit here. Dr. Salman, please copy this link in chat box. Uh, yeah, yeah. So this is uh, a link that I have shared. So you just have to, I think it has been given to some direct message. Okay, so this has been uh, a link uh, has been shared that is virtualbox.org. You just have to go with it. And there is a download section. So whatever the Windows host operating system host, you should go with there or, or just go with this, this is for. Uh, just download this 6.1 version that's the that's the advanced version and uh, install it so i'm not going to uh, install into my system because this is my main pc where i work uh, a lot of projects are i have to do do with so once i'll do it it will interact with my memory and other things so i'm not going to do it but each time if i'll do it then i have to uninstall and give a extra day to this thing so i'm not going to install and show you you just have to uh, you know uh, install it once you will install you will get a box like this and Just give me a minute, I'll show you how it looks like. Okay, you must be uh, saying this uh, uh, YouTube. So this is uh, one of my free lectures, which is available on the YouTube, where I have demonstrated this virtual box thing. So if you face anything, uh, you could visit this uh, uh, on the YouTube. So here I have demonstrated that. So that's why I'm not going to do it again. Uh, once you will, uh, let me show you. Okay, so if this is the link of this deco, uh, your 
virtualbox.org from where once you will download this virtualbox 6.1 so so something like uh, this uh, uh, cube blue cube cube will be oracle will be installed onto that and once you will open it and then you have to uh, download the ubuntu from from this link ubuntu okay so from where you have to download this uh, let me share the link again in the chat box Uh, this is the link of ubuntu.com. So for, from this link, you have to download. Uh, just go with the download and go with the Ubuntu desktop because you are going to use it on your own server. So you don't have to go with the server other things, cloud thing. Just download the latest version and there will be an I, uh, ISF file, I think. Yeah, th so the file will be downloaded and just place the path within the virtual machine. So once you will place the path into that, uh, into the virtual machine. So you will open it like like in 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 my this machine so you see this uh, okay uh, you see this i have this ubuntu 16.04 at that time so within the oracle virtual machine i have the ubuntu and from here i have to start the thing so you could see that it has the ubuntu address and other thing everything like this so once you will start it so So this is about the uh, virtual box from here. And once you will start from this icon, this from this icon you have to start this, and so it will take time. So that's why I'm skipping my videos. So it's starting. So in the in the initially it will take time to start five to ten minutes. It sometimes it takes. After after uh, downloading the virtual box, you have to again download the uh, Ubuntu also. Yeah, yeah. You have to again download the Ubuntu also, and you have to place the path of the Ubuntu into the, this this uh, uh, in, in this virtual box machine because it will it will ask. You have some file of the Ubuntu, and then once you will open it. It will ask you to give a path of that file. So uh, it will be installed into the Ubuntu again. Then, so bo both the things. First, you have to install the virtual box. Then you have to install the Ubuntu, and then place the path within the uh, virtual box. Then it will run. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So once you will open it, it will look like this. So it will take five. Sometimes it takes around five minutes to start, so so you don't have to worry and be patient. One once you are uh, you have installed this, uh, you know within the within the virtual box. So once you will do it, it will look like this is your uh, Linux machine or Ubuntu machine. So this will look like this. Okay, so this is all about those guys who have uh, Windows Seven or other things. This is for them, how to proceed with it. Or other guys may also try it, but uh, you have the options because right now I have I too have advanced windows, so I have uninstalled those things because it actually this virtual machine actually uh, affect your RAM and other things a little bit. So the processing and the speed you will feel that of your system has been little, little bit slow. That's why I'm not rec recommending to those who have the advanced version. But if you don't have the choice, you have to go with it. But you could, uh, for the experimenting, just for the experimenting, you could, you, you should install the thing and see how it goes on. Okay. Uh, now uh, we have already talked about with the, uh, we have already talked of Windows Seven, Apple guys, and now coming to most of the participant who has Windows Ten or the advanced version. So how they have to go with it. I'm just sharing my screen again. First, you have to check your uh, Windows because if, if you don't know how to uh, check your Windows version, just uh, simultaneous, simultaneously press your Windows logo key and R. So uh, a, a box like this run uh, will come up. 
so with those logo key and r on the keyboard so just press that and then type win word that is w i n and v e r windows version so i'm just going to copy and paste this into chat box so this is first windows logo key windows logo key plus r you have to press and then within this just type win word okay so once you'll type it and just press the okay you will know what our version you have so you have windows 10 version 21 h2 that is advanced it's not the windows 11 it's advanced, but the windows 10 it's 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 a very updated version of the windows 10 okay and uh, uh, then uh, i'm coming to uh, there is two two way either just directly but uh, another is way with the each step first so first i'll i'll demonstrate you with the each steps how to go with so just go on the settings open the settings and then uh, clicks on apps and features So on the this is apps on features and then on the extreme right side there is programs and features. So setting and apps and uh, apps then this programs and features. This is extreme right side. Okay. Okay, so it has opened up. Now on, on this extreme left side, when this pop-up window of these programs and features have been opened up, on this extreme left side, you see the option of turn windows feature on or off. So once you will open it, so this pop-up version will be opened up. So I have given with this traditional way of and uh, showing each and every step. So the most common or the tricky thing will be just type turns windows feature on or off into your search uh, dialog box and the same window will be, uh, and this same thing will be opened up. Okay, or, or just uh, here this uh, in the search uh, box, just type turn windows feature on or off and the same this window will be opened up. Uh, and now what we have to do just carefully see the things so if you have anything checked just listen to me very carefully if you have don't uncheck it unnecessarily don't do it if you have unchecked it if, if it's already unchecked then only check it but because if you uncheck it and check it you have to restart your system uh, that then only it will take the things so just uh, be sure what are the things so the uh, essential step is that you must have that Windows subsystem for Linux. So uh, as I said that from the 2016 and 17, uh, Windows has given this option. That means uh, within your window, there will be a subsystem for the Linux. Okay, so you have to check it. So it's if it's already checked, it, don't uncheck it. If it's unchecked, you have to check it and then again restart your system. So do this Windows subsystem for Linux. And then there will be two other things like this Hyper-V. Because in some, I don't understand the settings, but after each workshop, there have been query with me where the guys have checked it, but still their Windows system is not working. So I don't know what the other settings they have done because it's not possible for me to look into the other settings, but it is not necessary the Hyper-V. But you may check it for, if you are any having issue, Hyper-V is also have to be checked in and then it may work. Okay. and this virtual machine platform. So the Hyper-V virtual machine platform and Windows subsystem for the Linux. Just check these three things. So I'm just writing into the, yeah, if you don't have the, this Hyper-V option on my Windows, you don't have to worry. This is for the some guys because each time I get the queries, okay, they have done all the stuff, but it's not working. So once I check their Hyper-V version and it's, it's, it's going to work, I don't understand what the other setting they have, why they have, 
what's needed to check the hyper b with them so this is for them only so the essential is windows subsystem for the linux and this virtual machine platform windows subsystem for linux and uh, virtual machine platform so they have you have to check this virtual machine so after downloading one to what was to be done so i think devanshi has asked about if she is of okay let me ask her then let me finish so if you are having the windows seven other things then uh, uh, you know ubuntu has been installed and then you will practice the linux command into there so most probably windows hyper hyper platform similar to hyper v yeah most probably then you have to check this uh, windows sub system and virtual machine platform and then click okay and then you have to okay this this click okay and then you have to uh, restart your system i will then only so once you have checked this you have to restart your system it okay uh, so once you have done it you have to restart your system because then only it will take the changes and after that you have to go with you have to go on um, microsoft store and in the search option i mean in the this is microsoft app store so now they have given a lot of linux machine so once you will type the linux only you will get uh, how many versions are available here like ubuntu is one of the linux version i'll suggest you to go with the ubuntu but there are kali linux florida debian also like kali linux is there sus linux enterprise server okay so you see the oracle linux So you'll see that Debian is also there, open in WSL Ubuntu twenty point four. So these all all are you know uh, Fedora is also there, Remix for WSL. Let's see how many apps based on the Linux is 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 uh, is available with the with the Microsoft only. And after each month you will see you will get some new apps. So so that means this field is progressing too fast. But I'll suggest you to just go with the Ubuntu. That's the basic one and the more orthodox and Stable one. So just type the Ubuntu. You will search this Ubuntu and go with the latest version. I think latest is twenty point zero four or something. Yeah. So there is Ubuntu eighteen point zero four and Ubuntu twenty point zero four. So just go with this Ubuntu twenty point zero four, and uh, there will get 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 option. So you just have to. because i have i already have this so yeah from where you have to this just get on and it will be installed into the app will be installed for from the microsoft app store just install the ubuntu so it it's up to you we are going with the 18.0 for 20.04 but i suggest you to go with the advanced version whatever the advance is there once you will uh, download it you have to because it's it's automatically downloaded into your c Will not be on the desktop most probably. So just type Ubuntu twenty point whatever you have. Once you type Ubuntu, it will come here. So here it is Ubuntu twenty point zero four. So first time if you are going with it, you may run it with as 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 administrator. Sorry, administrator or uh, directly with this. Uh, if you are doing it for the first time, uh, it will ask you to press any key to continue and. and then it will ask you to set your username as well as password so you have to set your username make sure that you have everything caps lock off 
that means small letter while setting the user names it will take only that and then password so once you uh, it is very unusual thing in the last presentation i guess someone has asked me uh, a participant has asked me sir i am typing the password but it's not taking any key because she was typing their password something like that and she was not able to see anything so she said that i am not getting any key it's not taking password so it is actually it is very unusual thing with this once you are typing the password but you will not see anything like a star because most of the time when we are setting password a uh, star is visible asterisk sign is visible to us so she is pressing the key but the asterisk sign is not there so she was very you know she asked me so many times and i didn't understand it was 5 to 10 minute interaction for that but it is taking the time so whatever you are typing and then press the enter it will again uh, ask you to retype the password and then it's all set to go you are you are all set to go make sure that whatever the password you are going to uh, put it you should remember it note it down somewhere because in future if you are going to work very frequently on to this ubuntu app and each time you are going to install some applications or some uh, me, uh, some applications some. you have to uh, ju just a minute so they it will ask about the password to install the things so make sure that you remember the password and other things okay yeah please ask whatever the query was nothing your voice is varying when you speak away from the mic nothing is sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry for that so i was just saying that once you will install the ubuntu from the microsoft app store you have to open it once you are uh, because if you are doing it for the first time it will ask you to press any key and then it will ask you to set the username as well as password make sure the password whatever you are setting you should remember it because in future if you are going to install some app or install some you know uh, packages for some python package or some r package or any pipeline which is which will be used in the sequencing analysis it will ask uh, it will ask for the password to install those things so make sure that you remember the password and it's all set to go so from here it is similar to the so now my this window is very similar to what the apple guys have their terminal as well as what the ubuntu guys have their terminal so this is similar to similar to this so that means uh, if you are if you have installed the uh, uh, ubuntu operating system into your virtual machine you are going to use the command line so the command line by the uh, you know by by uh, and terminal things so here uh, with this ubuntu app i am going to we are going to use only the command line so so this is this app this prompt will only useful for for the command line and how this field is actually uh, you know flourishing because it has been given in the windows in 16 or the 17 only for the windows sub system library 1 wsl1 only they didn't have the gui interface and there were so many complaints like we can't see the gui we can't see the graphical we, we can't see the interface where the folder are so within 6 to 7 month only i think last year uh, june 2020 2021 only they have given a very basic option of seeing the seeing the uh, 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 graphical interface also in this ubuntu app so that means it's growing very fast so i'll tell you how to go with how to link this gui1 and gui2 with other things to make most of it tomorrow i hope everyone has done it ubuntu from microsoft store is a simple terminal or it will work like linux in the virtual machine so it's it's like a simple terminal and it has all the kernels also so this ubuntu it, it's it's a app it's not the whole operating system it's it's a app having some features of this operating system so uh, it, it 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 may not have installed all those kernel all the utilities and all the libraries of that kernel but partial things and enough to enough to work on enough to work on because right now uh, from the past 7 to 8 month i am working only on to this uh, linux with uh, whatever the necessities i am requiring for my research project so it's enough to uh, uh, go with it okay so next thing i am also going to show you uh, if you open your command prompt so this is different thing command prompt of of the windows and if you type wsl 
minus L minus T. So there is a space. So you will see that I have one WSL that is Ubuntu 20.04, which is running. Obviously, it has opened, it is running. And it, it is using the uh, version 2 of WSL, Windows Subsystem Linux 2 version it is using. So what I'm saying that if it is using the version 1, so, so you may not be able to use the GUI. But it has given the version two, so it it, it just from the six to seven month, no, most probably uh, in the June or July of twenty twenty one, so around eight to nine month only it has been given. Okay, uh, initially it was only the just one. So W, so so that means uh, I have Ubuntu twenty point zero four and it's running. It doesn't mean I can't have any other Linux version. I may have Ubuntu eighteen point zero four. I may have the Kali Linux, and I may have other things, and I may assign the version of one or two and other things. So if you don't have the WSL, another option is to go with this WSL install. If you don't have the WSL, so you have to install it. But most probably your system is updated, so you have it. So uh, because initially my system doesn't have, so I have to do it manually. So once you will install this WSL and then you just go with the checking option and uh, restart your system and then get the uh, application uh, Ubuntu app from the store. You you may have multiple apps like Ubuntu 20.04, 18. Point something or the Kali Kali Linux or Fabian, uh, any other Fabian or any other, and it will it will show you how versions are using. And similarly, uh, like in your mobile, you have multiple apps. So similarly, you may have multiple apps and run 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 the things onto it. So okay, that's that's all for uh, today's session. I think it's. it's enough. Excuse me, sir. Uh, uh, yeah. What please is ask. what is the difference between version one and two in this Ubuntu twenty point something? What is the difference between version one and two in US case? It is two, right? Uh, so if it's in your the version one, that means you are not going to use the GUI. So it it it, it provide a little bit of graphical interface. So what the graphical interface mean? Because it is, I'm going to like this command will. I I guess it will not work with this uh, one because initially it was not working. But I don't know whether it's working right now. So once I type this command, you will see that okay, this has been opened. You could see whatever the folders I have about about this Ubuntu Home Salman and whatever the projects I have into this okay LinkedIn Hormone project. This is. Reference, you know, human reference, you know, mouse reference, you know, other things. I could see this. So this is called as graphical interface. Okay. So, but this uh, this could not be done into the WSL one. Initially, it was not done, but I don't know whether uh, they have advanced it or not. But six to seven months ago, was not done in the WSL one. By using this command, you can only see the things there, right? You cannot, you will not be able to copy or will that possible? No, you, obviously, you could copy this. Obviously, you could copy this. So let's suppose this has been uh, opened it. Okay, I, I just want to copy something. So same uh, copy paste, control C, control B, those things goes on. Because you know what happens initially is that if I have something in my app folder, and I have to uh, relocate this into the Ubuntu. So once it was the first version, it was very difficult to rotate the things. Then you you must be very advanced in the in the command line. It could be done by the command line. So I have to uh, type the CD and mint MNTC and other things. So if you are very advanced into the command line, you could do it. But if you are not advanced enough to do that, you require this uh, graphical interface to copy and the paste thing. So then it. So, so then there is issue with 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 with, uh, with the WSL one. But if you are a command prompt guy, you you generally use the command. So that's that's the best thing. You could copy and paste with GUI one also, and with uh, with this GUI or as well as command prompt. But if you have version one, you have you are forced to do it with the command prompt only. You can't do it with the GUI. So this is the uh, difference, I guess. Initially it was not. Maybe they have updated with the WSL one also. So uh, just to interrupt, uh, uh, can the, the files be copied uh, from Windows to that uh, Linux? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can do it. Okay. Similarly, like, 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 see, you, uh, this one is from. Uh, this is my Ubuntu version WSL. You could see, and if I have to copy anything from uh, DEF, like you, you, ju you just used to copy the things from your drive from E to F, E to F. The same thing goes on with it. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Okay. So where it will be get saved if I want to see in my terminal Ubuntu 
how will i access you have you have copied from your windows to somewhere right here in my oh, ubuntu in my ubuntu what? terminal if i want to access how will i see that i couldn't get you how you copied it could you please no no I, i i just want to ask what what you are using you are having windows 10 and you have installed windows uh, ubuntu app or you are you have got ubuntu operating system into the virtual machine what what you have no mine is windows 10 and ubuntu app okay so so what you what's your question is here from uh, from my windows folder if i want to copy something how will i do here in, in your case you had copied into some somewhere but how will i access from my home folder in ubuntu so that is the thing which we are going to see uh, most probably tomorrow because here i will see the commands lines okay i have these folders i just want to use them for life so is there some good report yeah the good practice said i want to copy something here so i do this like mint c and so these are so the sir we have window 10 we are good yeah yeah i and uh, i i download the virtual box what is saying and after even we have to ubuntu also we have to install both sir uh, sir two things so so if you have if you want to uh, run into the virtual box machine that is yeah. that is a virtual vm where actually if i say so okay. it is these are totally two things so it was you know five to six years ago there is no option of this uh, having ubuntu app into the windows there was a lot okay. of competition it was not going this so then at that time it was the option of having virtual machine uh, vm we and other things and do the thing for the linux i'll suggest you uh, from 2 to 3 years windows has given the option so don't uh, uh, unnecessarily go with this virtual uh, machine vm where because uh, uh, if you if you do it i have done it both the things you definitely get the experience of slowing down your system and other things so if you have windows 10 just don't go with it ubuntu app has enough thing enough thing to to run a uh, a good bar informatic project i mean whatever the so what should i for i have the sir yeah i have window 10 sir so so what should i install should i install virtual yeah la should i install no no ubuntu? just 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 go just go with the ubuntu app from the microsoft app store just go with ubuntu app so you have to install ubuntu app yeah you just have to install the ubuntu app just make sure that in the terms windows feature on or off you have checked the windows sub system library or not just check okay. it restart your system make sure that you restart your system so that it takes the changes and install the ubuntu app very easy and go with it it has enough utility enough applications that you will run your good research project whatever the basic research or even the research which we are going to publish it's in, it, it's enough to do, do those things you don't have to worry of whatever the projects you go, do in your in our phd or in even in our my, my postdoc whatever the things i am going on it's enough if you have a good computation memory and fixing the ram and the things it's enough to do with it just means window 10 i have so we has install only ubuntu nothing virtual box ha ah, nothing virtual box uh, you could do okay. it but it will it will interrupt your memory and other things because i have run okay. all the things yeah. and i know what you if there is any other query you may ask how to open a special file from my laptop using ubuntu this open command is actually not working here so you can't see the uh word file and other things with this ubuntu app but if you have operating system you could see it it will use the library office so you have to copy it in the into the your windows folder and you could open the file and if it's a text file and other things simply just open something like this and you could see it like if i have any uh, word file i could see it So this, these are the things which are which we will talk uh, tomorrow. If I think there are not enough questions, so sir, okay, how, I, I, sir, how to enable graphic user interference in uh, Ubuntu? 
if you have if you just see this if you your wsl2 is uh, your ubuntu is uh, using the version 2 so that means your gui is working if it is not you have to change this wsl with the second version and for changing that i think i have to check the command for changing that let me just give me a moment Just give me a moment. Okay. So the if if it's using WSL one only, you the command for changing it will be. I'm just typing this into the chat box. So you have to set the version. So this this one is the version. Uh, mine is one to twenty point zero four is like this. So just give with this uh, uh, two. So now it will take automatically take the second version. That is WSL space uh, hyphen two times and then set version and whatever the uh, one to app version you have and then it's it will be set to two or if I want to set it to the one, I'll type one. So it will take one or two. Uh, so uh, just to make sure, uh, in case of yeah. virtual box, uh, maybe if I remember correctly, that we need to define the RAM and disk space. You, so, uh, yes, you have to, you have to define the RAM and disk space or this yes. But uh, in this Ubuntu app uh, approach, we we can expect that our machine is utilizing full yeah. space. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, so the same thing. I'm just it 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 just take the minimum in minimum whatever the minimum KBs are required to install an app. That's the benefit of Ubuntu. That's why I'm just saying that if you have a Windows 10 or 11, don't with go. So it will it will have some KBs for the app, and as much as you are running application onto this Ubuntu, it will automatically take all the process and things. Yeah. But suppose that if I am doing the high uh, sequencing analysis. And it requires 16 GB of my RAM. It will automatically take all those 16 GB. So that means I'm not going to run other things, and uh, it will automatically take. So so it it's up to you how many applications or how many utilities you are running onto that. Based on that, it will take the as well other things. Yeah, yeah. It's intelligent enough to do that things. That's why it's it's good with the virtual machine. In comparison to the virtual uh, box, yeah. Yeah, WSL registration distribution field with this error. The Windows system or Linux software component is not enabled. Please enable it and try again. So you just have to uh, see that if this uh, Windows subsystem for Linux has been checked, Hyper B has been checked, and virtual machine platforms has been checked. Check it, update your Windows system, check it, restart it, and then again do it. So it will work. So this is the only error you have. I think uh, there are not much enough questions. So if you are facing any difficulty, so you could write down to me as soon as I'll get that time, I'll definitely respond back to you. Till now, there is no one who could say that I have not responded, maybe after two to three days, but I'm sure I'll get back to you. It depends on, on, on my schedule, but I, I'll get back to you if you have any query, if you have any issue. I just have typed my email ID with the uh, with you and uh, you could mail me if you have facing any query okay because uh, i feel that it's it's a good thing i aim at, mostly mostly i say that if if it's related to my lecture only just get back to me obviously that's my responsibility to get back to you but if you have some specific query some interesting project and any other things uh, i prefer that uh, you write to me and if, if i too will file in uh, and, you know interesting and so we may have a good network connections so same goes same thing goes for everyone like you are looking for the networking and i too am looking for the networking if you have some interesting project and that that has been interesting for me definitely i'll will be connected and we'll try to work uh, together so thanks, Dr. Salman, for wonderful preface to the training and wonderful introduction to the Linux environment. And 
tomorrow we will have again dr salman for his practice session on linux command so thanks participants for this opening session of this data science and machine learning with python and gvs workshop we will share the video recording along with the powerpoint presentation of this session as soon as possible probably within 2 to 3 hours in the drive link also you will find the schedule of this complete workshop in the drive link hope you will enjoy learning with the code life this upcoming month and best wishes for rest of the training so with these words now i seek permission of dr salman for ending today's session yeah thank you thank you so much